In this example, we have a financial asset at amortized cost, which is credit impaired. Now remember, our financial assets at amortized cost, we will follow our general approach. Therefore, we need to recognize our lifetime expected credit losses. We need to calculate the interest using the effective interest rate calculated at amortized cost after adjustments of any loss allowances. Now, let's work through the information. Retail Limited acquired 1,100 Rand 12% per annum corporate bonds issued by Telecom Limited on 1 January 20.15 at fair value. The bonds are redeemable by Telecom Limited on 31 December 20.17 at a premium of 5%. Coupon interest is annually payable to Retail Limited. The effective interest rate of the corporate bonds is 13,4611% per annum. The reporting date is 31 December 20.15. The bonds were classified as a financial asset measured at amortized cost. On 1 January 20.15, Retail Limited estimates that if Telecom Limited were to default, the expected cash flows will be as follows. Our contractual cash flow, as per our original agreement, and our expected cash flow should Telecom Limited default. And the difference is our credit loss. Remember, for our allowance for credit losses, you will have to calculate the present value. Then they indicate to us on 1 January 20.15, Retail Limited determines the 12 month expected credit losses on the bonds as 150 Rand. On 31 December 20.15 and 16, the credit risk increased significantly since initial recognition. In addition, the corporate bonds became credit impaired on these dates. Lifetime expected credit losses for 20.15 is an amount of 7,977 and 20.16, 7,051. Now my recommendation, include a timeline to ensure that you understand the information on 1 January 20.15, our initial recognition date, we need to recognize a financial asset at amortized cost, therefore debit financial asset with 100,000 and credit our bank. On 1 January 20.15, they've indicated to us that the 12 month expected credit losses will be 150 Rand. Therefore, guys, we need to recognize the expected credit loss. Important, we need to use a negative asset account, negative asset account called loss allowance for bonds. And we will credit the negative asset account with a 150 Rand and debit our expected credit loss in our profit and loss. Now at the end of December 20.15 they indicate to us that our asset is now credit impaired and we need to recognize our lifetime expected credit loss. We have already recognized 150 Rand and our lifetime expected credit loss end of 20.15 will be 7.977. End of 20.16 will be 7.051. Now for 20.15, we need to increase our loss allowance account to the value of 7.977. Therefore, to increase this account, we will have to credit our loss allowance with a 7827. 
as this is our increase. And we will have to debit our expected credit loss in our profit and loss. The guys important. This is a financial asset at amortized cost. Therefore, we need to remember to recognize our interest. The actual cash received will be the 100,000 times 12% and this will be an amount of 12,000 and our effective interest income will be the 100,000 times 13,46,11. Credit effective interest income with 13,461 and our balancing figure shall be recognized in our financial asset account, the 1461. Now at the end of 20.16, guys, important, at the end of 20.16, our total lifetime expected credit loss is now 7051. And important, guys, this is also the end of our contract, our period. The bonds are redeemable on 31 December 20.17. Now, you need to take this one step back. Let's just quickly think about our journal entries. We need to remember to recognize the interest on our financial asset at amortized cost. Now guys, it is important that you identify the loss allowance, the negative asset that we have recognized relates to this asset and we need to calculate the interest on this negative asset as well. If you look at our theory at the top in this column with a light blue, Calculated on amortized cost carrying on after adjustment of any loss allowances. Because we need to calculate the interest on the loss allowance as well. And this is our journal number two. Interest on our loss allowance. You will identify that I have included on the right side of your screen our first journal entry to recognize the interest on the financial asset at amortized cost. Now guys, remember first we need to debit our bank with the actual cash flow received 12,000. Then we need to recognize our effective interest income based on the 13,4611%. We need to determine the carrying amount of our financial asset and I've referenced this calculation A. Initially we've recognized 100,000. We have added at the end of 20.15 an amount of 1461 and we need to take out our negative asset, our loss allowance. This will be an amount of 93484 times 13,4611 and our total effective interest income will be 12,584 and our remaining portion balancing figure will be debited to our financial asset at amortized cost 584. Then our second journal entry to recognize the interest on the loss allowance based on our effective interest rate will be the 7977 times 13,4611 and we will credit our loss allowance account with 1074 and debit our financial asset at amortized cost. Then guys, our total of our loss allowance should be 7051 based on the credit impairment, our lifetime expected credit losses. 
Now, the total that we have in our account will be the 7977 plus the 1074. And therefore, we will have to debit our loss allowance with 2000. Why? This is the difference between what we have and what it should be. The 7051 and this is a difference of 2000. Now guys, this is a very difficult example, I know. Remember, important. Include your timeline. Include your amounts. Go through your thought process, your steps. Remember your interest on your loss allowance.